example 1.5 consider four equal charges q1 q2 q3 and q4 is equal to plus one micro coulomb located at four different parts on a circle of radius one meter as shown in the figure calculate the total force acting on the charge q1 due to all other charges now this is your diagram now here we have to use the superposition principle so according to the superposition principle the total force acting on q1 you have to find it out so the total force acting on q1 is due to q2 q3 and q4 so we can write the total force f1 total is equal to f12 plus f13 plus f14 vector now let us see what are the forces acting here what is the force f1 f f12 f13 and f14 now the force f12 so this is due to these two these two charges now this is positive this is also positive the force will be acting like this so this is your force f12 vector similarly f14 will be acting like this so this is f14 f13 is here so this is f12 f14 and f13 now comparing to these two forces f14 and f12 f13 is having lesser force why the distance is greater the distance between q1 and q3 is greater when comparing to that of the distance between q1 and q2 and q4 and q1 so this force will be a lesser force when comparing with that of these two forces so the strength of the force f1 is very much lesser when comparing to f1 and f2 f12 okay now from this we can go for writing finding out what is r12 here this is this distance is r12 this distance is r14 and this distance is r13 so from the figure we can write here the distance r31 is equal to the radius of the sphere is 1 meter so it is this is 1 meter and this is 1 meter so that is 2 meter now r21 is equal to r41 we can find r21 and r41 now this is 1 meter this is 1 meter so this distance is root of 2 meter so this is equal to root 2 meter we are using the Pythagoras theorem so r21 is equal to r41 is equal to root 2 meter now we can find it out f13 f13 is equal to we can use the formula k into q1 q3 by r31 square this formula we can use it so q a k value is 9 into 10 raised to 9 q1 and q3 are having same value that is plus 1 micro coulomb that is 10 raised to minus 6 the whole square by r31 r31 is 2 meter so it is 2 square so this can be written as 9 into 10 raised to 9 into 10 raised to minus 12 divided by 4 9 divided by 4 it will be getting as 2.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 newton now we can find it out f12 and f14 f12 is equal to f14 which is equal to 
k instead of q1 and q4 i am writing it as q square itself because both are having same value instead of r121 and r14 i am writing it as r square itself so here it is also 9 into 10 raised to 9 into 10 raised to minus 12 divided by this is root 2 the whole square so you will be getting here 9 into 10 raised to 9 into 10 raised to minus 12 divided by 2 9 divided by 2 is 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 newton now taking the charge q1 alone and we are taking the forces acting on it now this is a straight force but these two are can be resolved into its components so f12 can be resolved into f12 cos theta so this is f12 cos theta and f12 sin theta similarly this can be resolved into f14 cos theta and f14 sin theta now this is how we are resolving the forces into its components now we can find it out f12. Now f12 vector is equal to this is acting along the positive x axis and this is acting along the negative y axis. So f12 cos theta into positive x axis that is i vector minus f12 sin theta into y axis. This is negative y axis, so we are getting this minus sign. Now, f12 value you know, that is 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3. So, 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 into, here the theta value here it is, in this diagram we can put the theta value here it is 45 degree. Total is 180, this angle is 90, so this is 45. Okay. So, we can take it as 45 cos 45 degree into i vector minus f12. f12 is how much? 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 into sin 45 degrees j vector. So, this is 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3. We can take it outside. Okay. Into... This is how much? 1 by root 2 into i vector minus. This is also how much? 1 by root 2 into j vector. Now we can go for finding f14 vector. f14 vector is f14 cos theta is acting along the x axis. And f14 sin theta is acting along the positive y axis so we are getting a positive sign so f14 you are getting the f14 value as 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 into here also cos is 45 45 into i vector plus 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 sin 45 into j vector which can be written as 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 1 by root 2 i vector plus 1 by root 2 j vector right f1 3 vector f13 vector is f13 i vector because f13 is acting along the positive x-axis. So, it is 2.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 newton into i vector. Now, we can substitute all these values in the first equation. That is, f1 total is equal to f12 vector plus f13 vector plus f14 vector. Here, f12 vector, we have found out the f12 vector as what? 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 1 by root 2 i vector 
minus 1 by root 2 j vector plus f13 vector is 2.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 f14 vector is 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 1 by root 2 i vector plus 1 by root 2 j vector Now these two terms will get cancelled that is 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 1 by root 2 i vector minus 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 1 plus 2.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 plus 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 1 by root 2 i vector plus 4.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 1 by root 2 j vector so this j vector and this j vector will get cancelled so here these two terms the first term and this term that is 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 is we can write this as 4.5 by root 2 plus 2.25 plus 4.5 by root 2 all the terms are having a 10 raised to minus 3 so we can take the 10 raised to minus 3 outside into i vector now this can be written as 4.5 plus 4.5 by root 2 so this can be written as 4.5 root 2 plus 2.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 i vector 4.5 into 1.414 root 2 value is 1.414 plus 2.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 i vector so f1 total you will be getting the value as 8.61 into 10 raised to minus 3 newton into i vector